Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me start by associating myself uh, wholeheartedly with your comments and the ranking members about, about OMB. I think you may be a little too kind when you talk about a waltz. It feels to me like the OMB isn't even entering the dance floor. Uh, and I, I agree that we have to move uh, in a way that takes into account what, what happens when we move those fuel loads. And in that spirit, I want to turn to Mr. Topic and, and thank you uh, for your uh, expertise. I want to thank the Nature Conservancy for all the great work you're doing in Colorado. And uh, let me ask you uh, your opinion of this topic. Uh, I have a hard time, as I've said, why, uh, um, understanding why OMB would propose cutting a program that aims to reduce the severity of fires by removing the fuel source. And I've introduced legislation that would tap into the FEMA's disaster relief fund, per what I think Ms. Youngworth powerfully said, uh, to help support wildlife mitigation projects. Can you briefly address the effectiveness and the cost of wildfire mitigation? Um, I believe there's an abundance of evidence that hazardous fuels treatments in the right places have lasting effects that are positive for both the environment and for fire suppression. Um, I just was given a new study that's coming out today or tomorrow, an ana a meta-analysis of 62 different uh, hazardous fuel studies. And once again, in, in the bulk of the areas where treatments occur, there, there are positive benefits. There are some places where you may have stand-replacing kinds of fires, such as in the Chaparral fires we're seeing, um, w where it doesn't obtain. But, but there's preponderance of evidence, such as um, the Ecological Restoration uh, Institute's work, that shows that it does work. Um, and I would encourage the, um, to be so bold that the, my love of the Constitution is that the Congress has the power of the purse here and that um, I really appreciate you all ad addressing these issues. I think it's so vital that um, we've heard for years that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We need to, um, we need to do it. Thank you for that. Chief, let me turn to you and, and return to the topic of aircraft. Um, you're well aware that uh, the NDA, the National Defense Authorization Act, provided direction to the Department of Defense to assist in transferring divested C-27Js to the Forest Service. Can you provide an update on uh, the receipt of the, those divested aircraft? In particular, have you had enough access to the C-27s in order to determine the specs and the potential modifications that may be needed? And do you see any other potential roadblocks in this process? Well, currently we're waiting for the Air Force to um, complete their analysis and determination whether these aircraft are um, surplus or not. As soon as that's completed and they determine that they are, we are ready to um, take um, possession of those aircraft. We have started to, um, to do some of the, uh, the analysis as to what it'll take to um, retrofit a, um, either a MAFS unit or a, or a tank on these so they'll we can retrofit them for retardant at the same time to recognize the modifications we'll have to make on these to take a military aircraft and to make it into um, our mission. Some of the, uh, the equipment, the armor that are on these aircraft, they're not necessary for our mission, so we'll have to make those modifications. Let me let you, you know here that uh, I've been on your doorstep about the next generation contracts, as has the, the chairman and the ranking member. I will also be on the, the doorstep of the Air Force. Uh, if this doesn't happen as quickly as it needs to happen. And I don't necessarily want to put you in the middle of this, but I want you to know that we've got to get this done. Um, and so I, I want to be updated on it. Um, you mentioned call when needed contracts just a few minutes ago. Uh, you know fires don't wait for contracts uh, to be signed, and, and you've said you'll have access to these air resources. Could you uh, share with us the fiscal effects of relying on these types of contracts? And uh, then back to the C-27Js. Would they be a cost-effective addition uh, to the tanker fleet? Well, your point on uh, call when needed resources, they, uh, they do come at a, at a higher cost. And that's why we, uh, we work together with the Department of Interior to look at the resources that we need at the start of the year. And that's what we try to contract for, um, because that's the exclusive use contracts are definitely cheaper. Call when needed uh, contract will run about one and a half to two times as much for the same resource as an exclusive use contract. So we, we, um, we do everything we can to have the resources we need at the start of the year, but as the fire seasons develop and we need to bring on additional resources, we can use call when needed, and we usually use that with helicopters. Mm -hmm. As far as the C-27Js, they will be an efficient um, asset 
that the, uh, the work that we've done so far, that we, we feel that we'll operate um, a little bit less than what we currently are, are anticipating with the next generation. And that includes the requirement that we have to be able to also uh, include in the operation the replacement cost. So as we fly these aircraft, we also have to set aside additional funds so that when uh, 20 years from now, we'll have uh, funds set up in an account so we can buy another aircraft. When you factor that in, it's still a little bit more efficient um, than our current contract. The other key part about the C-27Js, which I think is just essential for us to, um, to have a part of our fleet needs to be government-owned, contractor-operated. It gives us that, that, that certainty that even under the, the most difficult situations, we're going to have some aircraft to fly. Our contractors over the years have done an excellent job. But they have to deal in the business world. And we've all seen some of the things that have happened when we've had to shut down these aircraft because of, um, of uh, safety concerns. And then other things happen when a contractor decides to no longer fly in the middle of a fire season. So ideally, if we could have some government-owned, contractor-operated, and then contractor-owned, contractor-operated aircraft, I think that provides us the best mix of uh, um, large air tankers. Chief, thank you for that. What I hear you saying is that you want to fight 21st century fires with 21st century aircraft. We're fighting 21st century fires with the Korean War era aircraft. We need the next generation aircraft at our disposal, and we need these C-27Js at our disposal. Thank you.